Ah, we all love a good bad guy, don't we? Say what you want, a well-written villain's every audience member's favourite guilty pleasure. It's even better when you load them up with awesome superpowers. Hmm. I wonder what franchise comes to mind when the words badass antagonist gets mentioned. Yep, that's right. The freaking X-Men. Today we're finally giving into the temptation as I cover my top 10 X-Men supervillain power demonstrations. Well, I guess hotheads are always better suited to be bad guys, aren't they? Pyro always looked like he was leaning towards the other side, and there's no better way for him to get triggered than to watch a bunch of human cops shoot Logan in the freaking head. Yeah, that's not even the highlight of this scene, though. We're then treated to 18-year-old CGI firepower that doesn't really stand the test of time in 2021, but still kicked ass back in the day. God, that makes me feel old. The guy just goes bonkers and fires away at the cops and their vehicles till Rogue absorbs his flaming passion into herself. Actually, that, that, that sounded different in my head. But yeah, it was nice to watch this fiery character finally unleash his true potential. So it looks like we're kicking off this list with a bunch of sequels, eh? Juggernaut's the kind of guy you don't want to run into if he's in a bad mood, or even if he's in a good mood to be honest. This scene is living proof of that. Yeah, sure, Deadpool and Cable are going at it for a bit, but then Fire Fist unleashes the beast. Juggernaut shows everyone who's the boss with a punch so deadly that it literally puts the scene in slow motion. This CGI won't disappoint you because it allows us to truly sense the power behind that punch and recognize the big baddie as Hulk's only worthy opponent. Hey, the multiverse is a thing now, so it's super possible to get that matchup, isn't it? Oh yeah, for some icing on the cake, Cable gets T-balled and Deadball gets split in half. <laughs> you just gotta love Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Oh, oh god, that hurts. Suck it, Mel Gibson! Yep, this list wouldn't be complete without Marvel's best cinematic villain. Yeah, that's right. Go suck it, Thanos. Of course, Eric wasn't always an apocalyptic psycho. He's had some heroic moments too. Take this scene for example. The young X-Men are out on their mission to stop Eric's pseudo-dad from his nuclear bad guy plans. The X-Jet levels in on his submarine after Banshee locates it, and then it's up to the aspiring Magneto to do his thing. It's obviously a little difficult for him at first, but then good old Charles drops by for some telepathic bromance, and that's enough for us to witness true greatness. Just look at this, that's a freaking submarine! Oh yeah, this is a really top tier moment, and that musical score in the background just makes it that even more epic. That's right Eric, you should be proud of yourself. Forget about Riptide ruining everything towards the end. This big blue baddie has got some serious city planning skills, I'll tell you that much. We've already seen Apocalypse in action when he takes on all the X-Men at the same time, but there aren't enough people talking about this pyramid scheme, I mean scene, sorry. Honestly speaking, what's a better demonstration of power than literally destroying everything around you only to reshape it and turn it into a super neat Egyptian structure? Well, it's better than whooping poor Charles like a little baby, isn't it? Nah, seriously, this looks better than anything LNT has ever built during its entire existence. You know you're dealing with some god-level shit when your opponent can just pull off tricks like these by just raising his hands like he's gonna do some Charlie Chaplin impressions. I know I've said that Sir Ian McKellen is the best Magneto, but oh boy, Michael Fassbender is a close second. If you thought I was exaggerating with the submarine, well, here he is, lifted a goddamn stadium. It starts off with Eric refusing help from a nice Samaritan, and then he just does his thing and takes the stadium with him. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he's just casually carrying the venue along with him, like he's taking his dog out for a walk. <laughs> it's just so awesome. You want to know what's so powerful about this scene? He doesn't even struggle. He's controlling a stadium along with the freaking Sentinels, and he doesn't even flinch. It's scary, it's cool, and then it's an absolute cracker of a power demonstration. I guess he finally found that balance between anger and serenity that Charles was talking about. 
Hmm, I wonder if that's what happened with Smart Hulk too. So much for being a survivor. This was a tough pill to swallow. We knew the Phoenix power was pretty badass, but we definitely didn't expect it to freaking obliterate Charles Xavier. Now this scene starts off just normally, you know, Charles is just trying to help Jean get her shit together, but he makes the fatal mistake of getting inside her head. Yeah, you know that doesn't end well for anyone. The Phoenix awakens and it decides to show off what it's capable of by spinning stuff around, lifting the entire house, and yeah, killing Professor X. I mean, there's a Wolverine versus Juggernaut battle happening downstairs, but it's got nothing on what the red-haired femme fatale has to offer. It's gripping and it's emotional too, as Logan's mentor and Eric's frenemy is blown apart in front of their eyes just like that. Man, now that's what I call a serious flex. Well, up until now, all my entries are pretty much about someone losing their shit or just plain showing off. This is a unique one. You wouldn't normally take Sebastian Shaw to be the top-notch villain. I mean, come on, this is the footloose guy. But man, he can be just as dangerous as any mean baddie. Just don't pass a coin through his head, yeah? Anyway, Colonel Hendry figures he's in deep shit when his deal goes south and he literally pulls out the oldest trick in the book. A grenade. Oh, yeah, real innovative, buddy. He blurts out the typical, let me go or everyone dies line, but then Shaw comes to rescue us from this stereotype by pulling the grenade himself and absorbing the entire blast. God damn, I sure as hell wasn't expecting to see that in the movie halls, but hey, that's just the boring part. Shaw goes on to show his favorite part when he redirects his stored energy right into Hendry. Yep, yeah, it's just a couple of moments, but the impact is undeniable. You saw this one coming, right? You did, didn't you? If you ever doubted the Phoenix and her abilities, well, this is literally her endgame. Logan starts off decently by trying to convince Jean to stop with all the killing and come to him for some of that Wolverine loving. But yeah, the humans mess it up again and just shoot at her like a bunch of idiots. Come on, man. Don't you know who you're firing at? Well, it all goes to shit after that because the Phoenix awakens and destroys everything in her path. I'm not kidding, she doesn't spare anyone at all. X-Jets, buildings, mutants, soldiers, everything just gets turned to dust. And if that wasn't cool enough for you, she goes on to lift the freaking ocean. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that would make a finger snapping purple titan proud. Then we get a two for one because Logan shows off how quickly he can heal from his injuries before he eventually kills his ill-fated lover. A tragic end to an epic show of power. Come on, you know I was going to include the OG Magneto after the Fastbender entries, yeah? This guy just doesn't know where to stop. First he lifts a submarine, then a stadium, and now a bloody bridge. Yeah, I think he was feeling a little insecure about the spotlight being on Gene for so long, so he just went like, watch this move, bitches. But on serious note, it's amazing to see how powerful the old man is as he carves out a path for the Brotherhood to carry out their mission. Yeah, he makes a few faces and briefly struggles, but the result is perfection. If you really think about it, I'm pretty sure that this was the scene that inspired the previous two entries on this list. Anyway, Magneto rules. No more superpowers. But you can never strike gold! Ah, you sure as hell weren't expecting this one now, were you? Well, leave it to yours truly to always keep things exciting here. I think it's an understatement to say that Apocalypse is super tough. I mean, I just spoke about his ability to reshape a civilization into a pyramid. But what's more badass than that? Well, how about launching all the nuclear missiles in the whole world? 
The power to launch these weapons of mass destruction is already impressive enough, right? Now, just think about this. Apocalypse has endless nuclear weaponry at his disposal. He could have easily just nuked everyone back into the Stone Age, but luckily, he just decides to throw them all into space, which I guess is also pretty badass, isn't it? I'm pretty sure the Blue Psycho knew how big of a flex this was because he literally calls himself God. Dude, calm down for a second, yeah? I'm sure the Phoenix has something to say about that. But yeah, all in all, freaking epic. And there you go. That was my personal demonstration of the top 10 X-Men villain flexes in the movies. If you've got another one in mind, let me know in the comments and I'll see if this series deserves a volume two. Remember to like, share and subscribe to keep yourself tuned into some amazing content coming your way soon. Patreon is in the description as well, so don't miss out on what's going to be a busy season ahead. All right then, I'll see you next time on the TV Regents. <laughs>